everybody. This is a quick video on how to index arrays uh, using NumPy. So first and foremost, obviously you're going to want to import NumPy. Here I'm importing it as NP, and all that is is convention. It allows you to type a few less letters every time you call the NumPy library. So everywhere you see NP, I'm actually calling NumPy. So once you have that imported, you want to create an array. In my case, I'm create using a list, and I'm just making values one through seven. It's one row, seven columns, and I'm calling np.array to get that. What that looks like is this simple array here, one through seven. Uh, the easiest way to index something is just basically pulling up the array and in square brackets putting the index value. So here I'm grabbing the very first value, which is index zero. When I call that, it gives me number one, right? If you want to call the end value, it's a little bit trickier. Uh, the end value is actually listed as negative one. So if you don't know the end value, you could obviously just put, I think this is index six in this case, because it starts at zero and goes up to six. But if you don't know that, you can just put negative one and you'll get your last value out from that. If you want to slice the array, not just get a single value, but you want to actually get multiple values out, you can do it a few ways. Uh, basically, when you when you call the square bracket, you can have do what's called a start and, and an end value. Um, so I could put one here and then it starts here, it ends at three. But if I leave that blank, it actually just starts at the beginning and it goes up to the third value. So I can do that and you get one, two, and three. And you can go the opposite way where you get the last three. But instead of actually starting at the first value, you're gonna start at three back. So similar to how this is the last value, this is three back from the last value here. And you're gonna to go to the end. So, and then again, this little uh, colon here without an end value just goes to the end. So you can go ahead and call five, six, and seven there. If you want something like the odd numbers out and you happen to know it's just integer values, well, you can call the array, you can give a start value at zero, you can give an end value at none. And the reason I'm giving an end value at none is because if I do an end value at negative one, it'll go up to the last value, but it won't include the last value. So putting up an end value of none will allow you to do that. And then you can uh, go by two. So this is the, when you add a third value into this square bracket with the colons, it's gonna be the step indicator. So normally you step by one, here we're stepping by two. So when I go ahead and call that, I get one, three, five, and seven. One thing I did not try was just to call it empty, and you can actually do that as well. So without putting none in, you can just leave it as an empty value. But you'll see if I put in a negative one here, you have one, three, five, and seven. But if I put negative one here, which would indicate the last value, the seven goes away. You get one, three, and five. So you want to leave that blank there in two semicolons. If you, excuse me, two colons. If you uh, only do a single colon, you'll basically go from value zero to, two, to index two. So again, here for even numbers, instead of starting at zero, I'm gonna start at one, I'm gonna to go to none, I'm gonna leave none in there just for the sake of visualization. And I'm gonna go again, step by two. So we go ahead and call it and you get two, four, and six. And again, the even values in this array are two, four, and six. You can even go backwards in the array, you can index it backwards. This is kind of a nice way to to pull it out or revert it back. I think you can also do a flip left and right, not something like that. But this is actually pretty simple to do. You basically start at your end value. You go to none, which is gonna be in this case, the beginning value included, or you can leave it blank as well. And you're gonna increment by negative one, meaning you're just gonna count backwards. When you do that, you get seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If you have multi-dimensional arrays, it gets a little bit trickier, but not too much so. So we're gonna go ahead and make a two-dimensional array where you have first row of one, two, and three, and a second row of four, five, and six. Don't forget to include the double square brackets there. I think it has to be a tuple or something like that to add it in there. Um, next, you're gonna call that. So let's say I wanna pull one value out. Well, in this case, I can't just put zero in, right? I actually have to put in uh, zero comma one to give me a single value. And let me actually print that value. There we go. And if I put zero in, actually, I haven't tried that. So if you put zero in, you'll actually just get the first or the zeroth row. Okay, so but we want a single value there. If you have multi-values, uh, so multiple values, you want to, again, to create a slice from your, from your uh, multi-dimensional array. Well, here you're going to do the rows, and here you're going to do the columns. What this means is give me rows, zero up to two, and give me columns, zero up to two. So when I call that, I get one and two. And again, the two is not included in this case. And I get four and five. Well, if you look at it, you're getting the, these two values and you're getting these two values. If I change this to a one right here, it would just be single value. And if I change it to a three, I believe it will give me everything. There you go. 
So in our case, let's leave it as a two, and here we go. And just to give you kind of a kind of grill that in a little bit more, let's say I want only the first row and I want zero up to two columns, I get one and two. And again, it's column zero, one, up to two, but two not included. So I hope that was uh, useful and it's something that you can report back to whenever you get a brain fart and you need to kind of uh, go back through how to index arrays. Thank you.